after studying this module we shall be able to know about the meaning and mechanism of electrocution the sign and symptoms of electrocution the post mortem findings in case of electrocution To introduce the topic of electrocution, I will begin with a quote from Milton Friedman who said, only a crisis actual or perceived produces real change. When the electric current passes through the human body, it is capable of producing variety of effects ranging from a localized muscular spasm to tiny marks of contact burn or even immediate death with little or no apparent burns to severe charring. The injuries caused by electrocution, they follow various laws of physics, hence are predictable to a great extent. Voltage is the fundamental force or pressure that causes electricity to flow through a conductor. Voltage is measured in volts. The resistance which is measured in ohms is anything that impedes the flow of electricity through a conductor. Current is the flow of electrons from a source of voltage through a conductor and the same is measured in amperes. That's the basic physics. Then the injury caused by electric current depends upon various factors like the kind of current. An alternating current is more dangerous than a direct current of an equal voltage as an alternating current reverses its direction at regular intervals. When alternating current comes in contact with the muscles, it produces titanic stimulation and doesn't let the person loosen the grip of the electric source. An alternating current of 70 to 80 milliamperes can be fatal while a direct current of 200 to 250 milliampere is tolerated without much damage. The, all the modern home appliances run on alternating current that is AC. Then amount of current. The electrocution is rare at less than 100 volts and most deaths occur at more than 200 volts. In India, the voltage for domestic supply is usually between 220 volts to 240 volts and the alternating current with 50 cycles per second. The currents of 10 milliampere causes pain and muscle contractions. Over 60 milliampere are dangerous and 100 milliampere is fatal. High voltage of around 1000 milliampere may cause the victim to be thrown clear. Then third factor is the path of the current. If the brain stem or heart is in the direct path of the current, then death is very likely. Then duration of the current flow. The severity of the injury is directly proportional to the duration of the current flow. For an electric shock to occur, the body has to be in contact with a positive pole and a negative pole or alternatively to the earth, any object which is not insulated from the ground. When the earthing is poor, for example, if the person is wearing rubber shoes or walking on carpet or wooden floor or on upstairs premises, electrocution is uncommon. The effect of electricity depends upon the voltage and the resistance offered by the body. In a properly insulated body, no harm will be done. The dry skin offers resistance, but moist skin is good conductor of the electricity. Blood has a low resistance and some of the predisposing factors are shock, anxiety, fear, exhaustion, as well as the cardiovascular diseases. An electric injury consists of fetal electrocution, electric shock, as well as burns, all three. The local effects of electrocution. They are mainly due to the current passing through the skin producing endogenous heat which causes boiling and electrolysis of the tissue fluids. The skin then explodes and roll back from the surface. A dry skin shows better marked burn rather than a well moistened skin. The electric burn or jewel burn. This is the specific and diagnostic of electrocution and is found at the point of entry of the electric current. Joule burn is the endogenous thermal burn due to the heat generated in the body from the electricity. The characteristic features of Joule burn are 
These are round or oval, shallow crater like with a diameter of 1 to 3 cm and have a ridge of skin of about 1 to 3 mm high around the part or whole of their circumference. The crater floor is lined by pale flattened skin. Sometimes it may resemble a broken blister when the skin within or near the margin of the crater breaks. When in prolonged contact, the skin on the mark may become brown and with the further duration of contact, the charring may occur. Sometimes the mark may take distinct pattern of the shape of the conductor, especially when there is a linear wire. An area of blanched skin is seen at the periphery of the electric mark and the same remains present intact even after death. This is considered to be pathognomonic of electric burn. Outside the blanching, there may be area of hyperemia. Occasionally, an alternating pattern of blister reddening, pallor reddening is seen and found mainly in the exposed parts of the body. When it is subjected to histological examination, the electric mark usually shows coagulation of the dermis with separation of the dermis in some areas and in other areas the cells become elongated and arranged in parallel rows at an acute angle or right angle to the dermis. Then the second category of the burn is the flash burn or the spark burn. A flash burn resembles an exogenous burn and is produced due to the intense heat resulting from the flashover. In a spark burn, an air gap is produced in between the metal and the skin and then a central nodule of fused keratin, brown or yellow in color, surrounded by an areola of pale skin is produced. These burns may be either very small or pinpoint or deeply seated and contracted depending on the duration and the degree of voltage which comes in contact. For example, if the area of contact is very large, the person getting electrocuted in a bathtub or in contact with an electric pole with wide surface area, there may not be any external signs. Brief contact with live wire may produce burns and the person may collapse due to ventricular fibrillation. Even severe charring, massive destruction of tissues with loss of extremities and the rupture of organs may occur in very high voltage burns. When bone is involved, then periosteum may be elevated or superficial layers of the bone may be destroyed, leading to fracture of the bones. The multiple lesions may be found in and around the regions of the flexors of the limbs if the current passes across the joints. The high tension electric currents may produce multiple small discrete pitted burns due to the arcing from the conductor of the current from the conductor to the body. Due to the dancing of this arc over the body, multiple burnt or punched out lesions are produced over large body surface areas which are called as crocodile flash burns or the crocodile burns. This flashover often produce arc eye. Then third category is the electric burns or the splits. In cases where the electric conductor is a wire, then a linear burn is produced. The metallic ion gets embedded in the skin and subcutaneous tissues when the current passes from the conductor to the body. A bright green imprint may be seen if the conductor is made of copper or brass. The splits are dry, hard, firm, charred and insensitive with ragged edges with a round or oval form and linear or irregular shape. The depth of the lesion may be greater than what appears through naked eye. The superficial layer of skin may be shed and may be found attached to the conductor. Localized edema and wrinkling of the skin may be found. Aseptic necrosis may occur beyond the area of burn which may lead to sloughing. Owing to the cooking effect of the current, micro blisters occur within the squamous epithelium and in the external thorny layer of the skin. These blisters represent the defects through which the steam exited. Larger vac vacuoles are produced within the epidermal cells, the nuclei of which are fusiform, hyperchromatic and show typical palisading pattern. 
that is peculiar distortion with stretching and narrowing of the contour. This is called streaming of the nuclei and these flattened cells stains darker than the normal cells hematoxylene and eosine. In the vascular media, the nuclei tend to be twisted to resemble spirals and the same may be seen at distant points from the site of the contact with electrode. There may be localized degeneration of the intima and secondary thrombosis may occur due to tearing of the elastic fibers and overlying intima. Then the exit marks. If you see the exit marks, they are variable in appearance, but they may have some features of the entrance wound. There may be more damage to the tissues and often the splits are seen at points where the skin has been raised as ridges due to the passage of the current. Then coming on to the post-mortem appearance in cases of electrocution deaths. Externally, if you see the body, their disease clothings, shoes, gloves, headgear, they must be properly examined for any kind of burns. Most of the time, the examination of the scene of occurrence is of utmost importance in concluding the case as electrocution. If the victim dies of cardiac arrhythmia, the deceased will appear pale and if he dies due to respiratory paralysis, he will appear cyanosed. The eyes are congested with dilated pupils. The rigor mortis appears early in electrocution and the post-mortem lividity is well developed. In about 60% of the cases, external findings of the electrocution may be there in form of electric burn or contusion and laceration at the point of entrance and exit which may extend till the depth of the muscle and bones. Multiple greyish white circular spots which are firm to touch and free from zone of inflammation may be found at the site of entrance and exit. The deceased may have fracture of the limbs due to severe convulsions. Extensive ecchymosis with the occasional singeing of hair may be seen, but sometimes the external findings may be very minimal and a very thorough and careful examination is needed to diagnose a case of electrocution. Arsing of the current may produce characteristic pit-like defects on the surface of the hair. Sometimes the electric entry points may be hidden inside the natural orifice like oral cavity or the urethra in cases where live wire is put inside the mouth or path of the current is through the flowing water which the disease was drinking or if the path of the current is the urine flow due to urination on a high voltage live wire. Sometimes the entrance and exit marks cannot be differentiated grossly. The site of the entrance may be diagnosed histochemically by seeing deposition of metal particles on the skin. This metallization of the skin is due to volatilization of the metal and the same being driven into the skin. It is also very difficult to differentiate between antimatum and postmortem electric burns. If you see the body internally, there will be asphyxial signs, all usual asphyxial signs are present. The lungs are congested and the brain is edematous, meninges, all solid organs, they are all congested. Along the line of passage of the current, the petechial hemorrhages may be found. For example, under the endocardium, pericardium, pleura, brain, as well as spinal cord. The entima or the complete vessel wall may undergo necrosis. The vascular thrombosis may be seen in the vicinity of the burns. The Zenker's degeneration is seen in the skeletal muscle along the path of the current. The small balls of molten metal derived from the metal of the contacting electrode may be seen carried deep in the tissues and they are called current pearls. Heat generated by calcium phosphate is seen typically as round density foci in radiological examination and is termed as bone pearls or wax drippings. The bone may undergo microfractures at multiple planes and necrosis. The focal petechial hemorrhages may be seen in brain and spinal cord and in some cases irregular tears and fissures in the brain tissue and rupture of the walls of the arteries. Occasionally, no lesions may be found both on external as well as internal examination and in such cases, death is usually due to vagal inhibition. If it is the cause of death in cases of electrocution deaths, the circuit may pass through any of the limbs to the head 
involving the brain stem or the upper cervical cord or from arm to arm involving the brain stem or the upper cervical cord in these cases death is probably due to the paralysis of the respiratory center and arm to arm circuit or left arm to either leg circuit involves the heart in such cases death is due to ventricular fibrillation or cardiac arrest without any fibrillation sometimes death is not instantaneous and the person may survive for few minutes to hours before collapsing in case where contact time is more but the current is slow then death occurs due to muscle paralysis along with secondary asphyxia in high voltage current exposures death is due to respiratory arrest or electrodermal injuries sometimes in non fatal cases the victim may suffer from paraplegia or hemiplegia loss of sight hearing or memory impairment death may occur even after few days due to super added infection from the hemorrhage due to rupture of the blood vessels coming out of the medico legal aspects death is mainly accidental in nature which may be due to faulty appliances or negligence while using the appliances or from short circuit people working in electric department may get accidental electrocution while repairing a faulty connection some people protect the boundaries of home or door knobs from thieves and trespassers by electrifying them with a live wire and this may result in the accidental electrocution in industries death may result from handling of charge lamp or accidental contact with overhead live wire death from electrocution is rare when electric current is used as part of the electroconvulsive therapy suicidal electrocution is rare but may be seen in mentally unsound persons homicidal electrocutions have been reported but the most important is the judicial electrocution which is carried out in the electric chair in some of the states of united states of america this was first introduced in the mid 19th century in new york and it was considered as best method of quick and certain death due to unpredictability of hanging the condemned man is strapped to the wooden chair and one cap like electrode is put on the shaven head scalp which is moistened with the conducting paste and other on the uh, right leg then a voltage of 2000 volts and 7 amperes is passed for 1 minute through the body after a titanic spasm and loss of consciousness the same process is repeated for a second time the site of the contact may show third degree burn the brain is heated up to 60 degrees and the vacuolation occurs around the vessels however the actual protocol and voltage varies from state to state in us judicial electrocution is widely practiced therefore in us but in most of the states the condemned person is first given the option of death by lethal injection as an alternative method to the judicial electrocution to summarize this topic the injuries caused by electrocution follow various laws of physics hence they are predictable to a great extent an alternating current that is ac is more dangerous than a direct current that is dc of an equal voltage as an ac reverses its direction at regular intervals so ac current is more dangerous than the dc the effect of electricity depends on the voltage and the resistance offered by the body in a properly insulated body no harm will be done the joule burn is the endogenous thermal burn due to the heat generated in the body from the electricity the site of the entrance may be diagnosed histochemically by seeing deposition of metal particles on the skin death from electrocution is rare when electric current is used as a part of electroconvulsive therapy so most of the time death due to electrocution is accidental very rarely suicidal and of course homicidal judicial electrocution is practiced in several uh, states of uh, united states